What's good, YouTube? It's your boy 2K to God. My man Sess is unable to be with us for this segment. Um, but I brought my man Malachi from Danger Zone Boxing Talk. He's on the segment. Uh, he's going to give his analysis and opinion on um, a fight that a lot of people, I know majority of motherfuckers actually, not just a lot of people, majority have no idea is taking place this Wednesday between the little guys. I always tell y'all, real boxing fans watch all 17. You know what I'm saying? The little guys is going to be the number two ranked minimum weight title holder. And that's uh, 105 pounds for you motherfuckers that don't know what minimum weight is. Uh, he's, his name is Knockout CP Freshmark. His real name is, shh, I'm about to fuck this up real bad. <laughs> <laughs> Damanun <laughs> Niyam Trong. And he's from Thailand. Okay, he's the number two guy at the minimum weight division uh, behind Wen Hang Minayothan. If you don't know who he is, uh, we've already done a video on Wen Hang Minayothan, um, how good he is, who he's fought, his dominance, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, on our channel. He's getting ready to fight um, a guy who's been around the block at the minimum weight division and and in uh, divisions higher than that. Um, his name is Shin Onu. He's fighting him December 14th this Wednesday in defense of his WBA regular minimum weight title. Um, there's some things <laughs> that are kind of shaky about this matchup that we'll get into a little bit later. Um, but first, man, I want to go to my man Malachi. Before I do, though, I'll just give you all a little breakdown. Shin Onu, he's five foot four. He has a 67-inch reach. Um, his record is 19 wins, 7 losses, 3 draws, with only 3 KOs out of his 19 wins. Um, not a very hard puncher, but he's a southpaw. That gives a lot of orthodox fighters trouble, right? The champion is, of course, knockout CP Freshmart. He's 5'1". Uh, he has a 65-inch reach. He's 13-0 with 6 knockouts. Um... Shin Onu in his last five fights, man, he's two wins, two losses, one draw. A lot of motherfuckers that know who this guy is are going to be like, but hold up, 2K, hold up, hold up, 2K. He fought at different weights in three of those last five fights. So, so he might be ranked higher at the minimum weight division. Okay, well, then I took the liberty of <laughs> out of those three, five fights getting his record and... At minimum weight, he's 0 and 1 with one draw. <laughs> so, with that said, I'm going to go to my man Malachi, man. What do you think about this matchup, fam? All right. Um, I think it's fuckery, man. I mean, there's it's no better way for me to say it. Yep. Um, you already, already spoke on the fact that this man is 2 2 and 1 in his last five. Yep. He only has three knockouts. And if you go and you look at who this cat's knocked out, one dude was 0 and 10, the other dude was 3 and 0, and the, uh, uh, the other guy, you know what I'm saying? The other guy was no better than that. So I'm like, yo, I mean, like, this is just unbelievable to me. Yep. I mean, the good things that I've seen when I, 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 I broke down this cat, he's, he's a pressure fighter, volume puncher. But he follows you directly around the ring, he lunges in. And, and, and he's perfect for, for uh, he should be perfect for KO. You know what I mean? To yeah. catch him coming in and just knock him out. You know what I mean? Uh, he is a southpaw. Uh, the best fight I think I've seen him fight in his only time that he fought a world champion was uh, when he fought, um, I'm going to mess up his cast name. Kamat Tan Tanaka. Oh, uh, or, uh, Kats, uh, Katsunuri Takayama. Some yes. Like yeah, Takashi. Yes. <laughs> now, and, and if you, I watched that fight, and um, early in the fight, you know, uh, the champion was rolling, man. And then, but then later on in the middle rounds, um, Oro started getting in some body work and getting back in the, in the fight. But then what happened? He kept with that lunging in, wild, looping, crazy punches. Mm -hmm. And he walked right into, into a punch in the 10th round, got knocked down. Got back up, got beat up for a little bit. He did have a bounce back round in the 11th, but then he did it again in the 12th. 
Now, now a lot of people are high on Kale, and I, I think he's a, a, a quality fighter. But I got to question him, too. Now, like you said, he's got uh, 13 wins, 6 KOs. But the dude see, he's knocked out has been knocked out 24 times. Oh, my God. Damn, I didn't even know that. <laughs> 24 <laughs> times. So I got a question, like, okay, is he for real? You know, and I, and I did respect him because he beat uh, Ross in, in the last fight. Yeah. And Ross should beat who I thought was the best minimum weight in the world, which was uh, Hinky Buzzer. Yes. But when they fought, that, that fight was horrible. They wrestled more, almost as much as they punched. So I was like, I really don't know how good this kid is. And this fight right here is not going to tell me, period, if, he, if he's for real. Yeah. Because... I think you're going to talk about it later. We're talking about the fuckery that the WBA pulled to pull, get this fight. Yeah. That's what I think about the fight, brother. Man, I, I, cannot, I cannot disagree with you, man. You're 100% correct. And it's funny because I mentioned uh, in the Wen Hang Mini Yothan video we did, um, these two guys are promoted by the same entity in Thailand, okay? Uh, Knockout CP Fresh Martin and uh, Wen Hang Mini Yothan. They're both from Thailand. Uh, Tim, Tim, my guest on that show, shout out to my man Tim. He was like, man, I would love to see those two fight. I mean, respective, respectively, they're ranked one and two uh, in the division. So, of course, we want to see those two guys fight, you know, possibly get a lineal champion out of this, out of that matchup, right? But yeah. if you look at how their promoter is handling their careers – and I, I did some research on them. He is actually putting them up against guys who were not worthy at all. Period. <laughs> period. Time. Go ahead. I said period. You went up to say correct. Exactly, man. Like, they're not worthy of these type of shots, man. Like, you know, Wang Han is like, what, 42-0 and 0 with 17 knockouts. That's Wang Han Minyothan's, uh record. And I'm looking at yeah. his 42 wins, and a lot of them come against motherfuckers that aren't really anybody in the division. You know what I'm saying? Now, to his credit, there's only like 300 people, <laughs> 300 <laughs> recognizable fighters in the minimum weight division. You know what I'm saying? And that might be a stretch. But there's still 10 guys who are ranked, you know, the best guys at minimum weight. And neither one of these motherfuckers are fighting those other eight guys. You see what I'm saying? Nope. So, I mean, I could look through the list. We got uh, Byron Rojas, who my man Malachi just mentioned, right? Who just, who had beat a uh, Hecky Butler. Shit, I think Hecky Butler moved up, but pretty sure he'll go down and knock off a Wang Ham and a Yothan if given the opportunity. You got, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Jose Argumento. He's another good fighter. Shit, the cat that that uh, Shin Onu did fight and lost to his actual last uh, uh, shot at a title, Katsunari Takayama, he's another guy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, looking at the, 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 the list of the, of the best 10 fighters in the division, you know, it's, it's clear that um, their promoter is not trying to put them in fights with those guys. And I'm looking at Shin Onu and how he's ranked in the WBA. He's currently number 14. Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So... There's 13 other motherfuckers that could have gotten this opportunity. But their promoter kind of looked down that list and was like, mm, ah, mm, let's get that guy, number 14. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and one could argue, argue the WBA moved him up in order to give this fight some type of, of uh, respectability. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's ridiculous. Because he was supposed to fight former two-time two world champion. Um, go or uh, or Dara. Yeah, I, know I think that's his name. He was supposed to fight him. Yep. And something happened in contract negotiations. It came out. The WBA came and said, "Okay, well, we're gonna make sure he fights one of these top ten guys." Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, moves Ono up, the, you know, up in, into the rankings. Yep. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. And it's 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 ironic that the negotiations did not fall through with with uh, we were supposed to fight before this fight. I mean, Ono's actually a fill-in fighter, by the way. Um, yeah. And yeah, he, he, he it, it's it's funny how negotiations just fall through. I mean, it's just minimum weight. What the fuck are negotiations falling through for? It's not like they're back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not like 
you know, this top rank, you know, versus Al Heyman, you know, motherfuckers getting promoted by these cats, and there's a whole yeah. lot of money involved and shit, and, you know, negotiations can't fall through. I will say this, doing my research, though, the entity, I can't remember the name right off the top, but the entity that promotes Freshmart and Miniyothan, they have a lot of pull at that weight, and that weight's higher than this. Uh, their pull, pretty, mm-hmm. their clout pretty much ends at like fucking junior. I mean, uh, uh, at flyweight, pretty much ends there. You know what I'm saying? But at minimum weight, they they are the shit. They are the the promoter that says, "Nah, we don't want that to happen. Fuck that." And it sucks because the top two fighters of the division are promoted by the same entity. And usually, you know, when you have a promoter, like for example, top rank. Just because they're promoted, two fighters are promoted by the same entity, they're still going to fight shit. Actually, in those type of, those bigger promotional companies, that's all they do is hold fights between guys in their stable, okay? Yeah. But unfortunately, in this situation, this guy or this entity that's, that promotes them in Thailand, he's trying to have the best fighters in his stable, and he wants those two guys to be the most dominant. Therefore, he is not trying to put those two guys together in the ring. And it's unfortunate for that division. We may have some fucking title hoarding in the works in that division, fam. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, nevertheless, the fight is happening. You know, uh, Shin, Onu, Shin Onu does have some some pros. I mean, um, he's he utilizes the jab. You know, he has a nice uh, straight left hand. Um, as I mentioned, he's a southpaw earlier. He has a nice straight, straight left hand. It gets set up by the jab almost every time. Um, he does utilize a little bit of lateral movement to escape danger. Um, you will see him turn his opponent at times. Um, he's pretty durable. He has seven losses. He's been knocked out three times, though, but I, he's somewhat durable. Um, I don't see him being too durable against a guy like Freshmar. <laughs> but um, <laughs> let's face it, though, man, he's a C-level fighter. Um, yeah, uh, no better than shit. C, C to C minus. You know what I'm saying? Love yeah, fighter. Um, he, he does have uh, some pretty, pretty good body work too when you use it. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Absolutely. So. laughs> given given the competition, yeah, absolutely. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> absolutely. Um, he doesn't sit down on any of his punches though, man. That's why he only has three knockouts and 19 wins. Um, he really only looks for one punch and that's the straight left, the straight left hand. Um, he backs up too much. He's very uncomfortable on his back foot. He kind of, that reminds me a little bit of, uh, this is a little off topic, a little bit of, uh, American and Jose Pedraza, two fighters who are not very good fighters on their back foot, but they elect to move back. Um, mm. this is what Shinonu does a lot in his fights. Um, he utilizes the movement, as I said earlier, to, to get out of range, to avoid danger. But when he does that, he drops his fucking hands. You'll routinely see him <laughs> drop his hands. Um, perfect example, I was watching a fight versus a fighter uh, named uh, Omari Kimwari. And in the first, I think, 20 seconds of that fight, uh, Kimar- uh, Kimwari was coming forward and... Onu was moving back, and when he was moving back, his hands were, like, all the way down. So Omri threw a motherfucking right hook from out of nowhere and hit him flush, and it was loud. It was like... (laughs) (laughs) And the goddamn crowd, this was in Japan, the crowd was like, ooh. You know what I mean? (laughs) So, I mean, it is Kim Wary, Cat. He's he's another C-level fighter. He's nobody big. I mean, and this was a a fight that ended up going to uh, split decision. A split decision win for Onu. So, just shit like that, man. I mean, he yeah. he has no chance against a guy who um, he reminds me of. He He's like a a, a Ruslan Provodnikov type of fighter at minimum weight. This nigga pressures you continuously. He gets on the inside. He has excellent body work, uh, Freshmark does. Um, yes. He's body snatching motherfuckers, man. I've seen him too many times. Cats just go to the ground, crumble, doubled over, holding their stomachs. You know what I'm saying? Um, he has this crazy-ass short upper hook, so to speak, 
like he's inside you and he throws this punch he starts from the bottom but as he's coming up with it he turns that shit at the last minute turns it into a hook that shit has extreme power on it at short distance like it he don't even need full extension on that punch man he could be right in front of you like right up on you throw that shot and it'll land like you were hit with a baseball bat you know what i'm saying um yeah he's like i said earlier he's got high stamina high work rate he's a swarmer uh the only thing about him i don't like his footwork uh when he's being too aggressive at times if you just move back on him it'll look like he's falling forward you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you saw balance. Exactly. You know exactly. Yep. Yep. Um, also, he can be outboxed. I mean, yeah. <laughs> put, put somebody in that motherfucker that can jab and use excellent lateral movement. Man, that's an easy fight for that boxer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the only thing I think about uh, knockout man to beat this kid because he fights in Thailand. Almost I'm like, like going back to what you were talking about earlier. Almost all these Thailand promoted fighters don't come out of Thailand. Nope. And you're going to have to go in there and knock one of them out to yeah. beat the decision. Yeah. So, um, and I, I was thinking, first of all, maybe Odo has a chance. You know, he's got that, that two-inch reach. He's got the height. But it, that, that didn't work for uh, Alex Diaz when, no, when he fought a uh, uh, knockout. And, you know, he only lasted four rounds. So, uh, I think this fight might be shorter than that. Yeah, I think uh, I think he gets Anu just based on what I've seen. I think he gets Anu out of there in probably two rounds, fam. Like, yeah, you know, and I wouldn't be surprised if it were one round. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it depends. It depends because I, you know, I did notice, you know, he he uh, he fights a little different, you know. Uh, he tries to with his style, but uh, I want to see if he's gonna try to come straight forward or is he gonna move this time. He's gonna you know try to back up and box a little bit and utilize his his jab and his reach a little more. Yeah. Uh, he might survive. If he goes straight forward and he gets to doing that lunging inside stuff, man, he'll walk right into one and go to sleep. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. I'm I'm waiting on, you know, minimum weight, dog. They don't really have, like, those master class type of boxers, fam. Like, that's one thing that that yeah. division is missing. Um, yes, sir. You, you watch a lot of the fighters. They don't, you know, they don't have that movement, you know, like a Laura, Arislandi Laura type movement. Shit, fuck that. I don't even go to Laura. They don't even move like uh, Miguel Vasquez. They don't even have that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They don't have the type of jab he has or the defensive technique that he has. I mean, it's mm. – I don't know, fam. Like, it, it's a wide-open division to where that promoter, um, he has extreme clout. Motherfucker pretty much can do whatever he wants whenever he wants to do it. And a lot of these guys, man, they can easily get drawn into um, Slugfest, which actually yeah. – is a plus for CP Freshmart and Wan Hang uh, Minayotin. So, yeah, one hundred percent right. And it's good for the fans. The fans love those type of fights. Not only feel like I'm I'm I'm, I'm crafted on 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 these little dudes because you know I love the yes. little dudes. That's what I'm, I'm just crafted on. on uh, you know, I'm just crafted on how how this it, to me like when I look at it, this is just a total and utter mismatch. Unless KO is not the guy that. We we've been led to believe he is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and and once again, I looked at was like, dang, 24 freaking losses by knockout by the dudes he's knocked out, man. And everyone else has been UV decisions. So I mean, I, I do got to question how legitimate uh, of a of a KO artist he is. That's true. He and you know so, what? You're right because he actually has more decision wins than he does knockouts. So yeah, he's 13 0 with six. That's seven decision wins. So you're absolutely right. Um, and and like I said, Ono's only been knocked out three times in seven fights. I mean, that's not. He's not like you know a Terry Norris. You know what I'm saying? My fucking just yeah. get knocked out. But at the same time, I mean, that's a pretty good ratio, uh, given the loss. Uh, Ono's got some heart, man. In, in, the, in the fights that I watched, he was he was outclassed. Yeah, but he can come. He yeah. kept coming, man, and he's got heart. So, I mean, that 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 does intrigue me about this fight because I do want to see, okay, is KO for real? You know what I mean, is he for real? Because if he's for real, he should get this, you know, he should, he should, he should get an easy victory here. If, and if he struggles in this fight, I really got to start questioning how for real he is. And then I would really love to see him fight Hinky Butler. Oh, man. So, That's a good fight, right? <laughs> he got the, he, yeah. Man. So, I think he, he, you know, Butler could give him that work, man. You know, because hey. he's... He, He's a pretty good fighter, and he's a high-volume puncher. 
he don't have a whole lot of power himself, but but he does he does know how to box. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. My only problem with Hecky is, man, he can get drawn into Slugfest. That's my only problem with him. Yeah. And uh, with that's an excellent him, point. Yeah, when him being able to do that again, man, that's that's a plus for these guys, uh, Manyothan and, and Freshmart. <laughs> that's what they want to do. Yep. Yeah. So, all right, man. We'll go ahead and conclude this segment, man. Excellent boxing talk of the little guys. Um, for everybody out there, don't fucking ask me what time this fight starts. <laughs> <laughs> I spent like 30 minutes trying to find a time, dog. I don't know. I just know there's a stream out there. Uh, the fight is on Wednesday. It's, it's scheduled December 14th. There's a stream out there on YouTube where they're, they're going to be live streaming the fight. I just have no fucking idea what time the fight starts. So I, I guess just go on your goddamn favorite streaming source and just keep clicking that link until a goddamn fight pop up. On the <laughs> it, it, I think at the same timeline as uh, the same time zone as Japan, because every time that one of the fights is Japan, man, it's like eight eight thirty in the morning here. Seven. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good point, okay. actually. Yeah, um, they could be. It's a possibility. That's good. That's, I'm glad you said that. Um, try to check out your 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 favorite streaming source early in the morning. Start around about six thirty in the morning. And move up from there. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Because that's usually when, when their fights actually come on over here in the U.S. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I usually have to catch catch one of them on YouTube about four or five hours afterwards. Yeah. But. Yeah. Good point. Good point. All right, fam. I want to thank my man Malachi for coming on and, and uh, giving us his insight on the little guys. He's, he's one of my favorite guys to talk to when it comes to the little guys. Man, I always uh, enjoy being on here from Danger Zone Boxing Talk. Um, YouTube, do what you do in the comment section will be real. This is real talk for real fans. One.